Everybody, thanks very much for coming again. 57 now we're up to and still counting. That's great. Welcome to the fourth episode of Friday Night Live. Um, what started off as a one-off has become a weekly a weekly kind of programme now, um, which is great to see. And it's great to see all you people coming back, all you kids coming on week after week to listen to who, who, what everybody's got to say. And it's, uh, it's great that we're able to do this every week for you. Um, tonight, we're lucky to have three players that currently play in the Elite League. They're going to pass on a lot of their stories, all, the clean ones anyway. They're going to pass on a lot of their experiences. Um, Matt, Murph, Jordan, I don't know what you three you think you've let yourself in for, but some of the questions that we get from some people can be a little bit varied, to say the least. Um, but no, it's great to have you guys here. Um, it's been a busy week um, since we were last had last Friday Night Live. Um, since then... We had Jamie McBrerty on Saturday morning who was talking about growth mindset, which I see a lot of the same faces were on again. But listen to that. We've had two fitness classes as well, one for the under 13s and one for the over 13s as well. Uh, and then on Wednesday night there, we had um, two of the best Scottish women players that we've ever produced, and Angela Taylor and Beth Schoon, and they were talking about women's hockey. So it's been a busy week. We're hoping to keep those weeks as, well, as busy going forward. And um, we hope to keep seeing all you guys tuning in week after week after week. Um, quick thing with the usual house rules, guys. If everybody can keep their microphones on mute, that would be great. If anybody's got a question, if you can drop it in the chat box. And if you do have a question, if it's for either Matt, uh, Stephen or Jordan individually, if you could just say that the question's for them. And if it's for everybody, just say it's, it's, for, it's for all. Okay. The other little thing for those of you that haven't been on uh, any of these ones that we've had before, the best way to view this is in your top right hand corner if you're using a laptop, I don't know what it's like if you're using a tablet or a phone, there's a little button that says view, if you click on view and then if you click on speaker view, that way you just actually see the person that's talking and not everyone else in the room, okay? Does that all make sense? Can I get thumbs up from all you guys? You, you all excited? Yeah? Good stuff. Okay, so tonight we've got Stephen Murphy from the Belfast Giants. We've got Matt Haywood from the Glasgow ha Glasgow Clan, and we've got Jordan County from the Dundee Stars all here to talk to you tonight. So they're going, to, like we said, they're going to pass on some hints and tips and some fun stories, and they're going to talk a bit about, about themselves and what they've done in hockey over the years. So I'm not going to speak anymore because nobody wants to listen to me. We're going to hand over to you three guys. Um, why don't you start by telling us how you got involved in hockey? where your careers have taken you, places you've been, leagues you've played on, teams you've played on, and just give everybody everybody a little introduction about yourselves. Who'd like to go first? Youngest first, eh, Cal? <laughs> I was going to say oldest, most experienced, but yeah. <laughs> no, I'm... Uh, so my hockey journey kind of started when I was about four or five years old when the, uh, the rink opened in Dundee. Me and my dad just went down to kind of check it out. I don't come from much of a hockey family, so... I mean, it was just kind of trying out something new and seeing how we got on. And from about six years old, I think, started playing hockey for the Dundee Tigers junior system and just kind of never looked back from there. I think I made my first national team at around 11 years old and I just kind of sprung on from there. I mean, went from strength to strength and then started playing pro when I was around 17 years old. So, yeah, that was, that was kind of the start of my career. So, yeah. I think one, of you, one of you guys want to take over? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go next. Um, obviously, I'm from Sheffield, so um, I played in Sheffield from when I was five, six. I got into hockey from my dad's uncle. He used to live in Canada. And when he moved back over, he took us to a Steelers game and obviously fell in love with it and just wanted to keep skating and then actually found a team in Sheffield and went all the way through the junior system in Sheffield playing for the Midlands conference teams and and then made my first national team for GB under 18s, um, did 20s and then got the opportunity to move up to Glasgow, Brayhead when I was 18, 19, uh, 19 and then obviously just 10 years just celebrating my testimonial just there. Uh, I, mine, uh, my, my hockey started actually, my, my granny got me into to hockey uh she was a, a dundee rockets fan and uh she took me along to my gate to, to the games and uh i think as young as maybe four or five and i just got hooked on it and ever since i've been playing hockey and uh 
it's taken me all over the place, I suppose. I, I started playing uh, junior in Dundee, but I, I actually stopped for about a year until I moved to Glasgow, and then that's when I actually started playing in goal. Uh, I, didn't, I started as a player first, and then I, I changed the goalie about a few years in. And uh, there I played Glasgow juniors, and from there... I went to the, the Five Flyers and, and ever since really I've, I've I've played for quite a few teams now. I was taking teams in England and and uh over in North America and into Scandinavia as well. And then I've I've been in Belfast now for about ten and actually probably about twelve years now. So it's a, it's been a long journey for me. Cool. Thanks guys. So um We'll start off by asking a couple of questions. The first one I've got is maybe for you, Murph, um, purely through seniority. Uh, you've, you've obviously been around hockey and around the Elite League for a lot of years. A lot of these kids are really interested in the Elite League and Elite League teams. What do you think has been the biggest change in the Elite League from the time when you first came into the league as to where, as to where it is now? Uh, <clears throat> I, think, I think every year it be becomes a bit more professional. Um, <clears throat> I think that's not exactly from the league itself. Uh, you know, the, the way the league's run and stuff is pretty much the same, but I think the standard has grown and I think just everybody who's coming over to play, whether it's, you know, British kids, British guys, the imports, you're all coming over um, with a bit more respect, I think, for the league in general and, and and they're they're coming ready to play as well. Whereas before, I think it was, <clears throat> you know, it was maybe guys thought could come over and take it easy. And and uh, I think the last you know few I don't know how many years has been it's been changing. It's been it's been becoming tougher and tougher. And, and I think guys have, have come over and realised that the the league is growing and and the British standard that the, the guys that are in the league, the British players in the league, are, have, have improved as well over that time too. So the, the, I think the standards definitely improved over the over the years. Yeah. And Matt, Jordan, you guys obviously came into the Elite League when you were you were maybe late teens or early twenties. Um what do you what did you guys think of the standard when you first came into it? What did you have to do to your own games to get yourself ready for it? Uh, and that's also going back a year or two or three previous to be to join in the Elite League. What did you have to do to prepare yourself to play your, to play at that, that sort of that type of level? Um, I I would say that I found it a big step up from the old EPL, which is now well, well I don't know what it is now. It's the NAHL or whatever it is now. It's, the old EPL was was a four import league. A lot of Eastern European guys, and then coming over, coming up to Glasgow, it was a ten a ten import league back then. I think uh, about ten years ago, Murph, am I right? Ten import. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Anyway, so I, I noticed that even practices were intense and, and I realised it quickly it's like it's not just messing around anymore it's I actually have to work hard to to if, if I want to play I have to work hard and I have to get my, my fitness up and it just it was quite a shock for me but I, I think it's what I needed just to like get thrown in the deep end and sink or swim kind of thing. I think uh, what kind of prepared me was uh, maybe like a the four years I spent in the EPL, similar to what Matt said, I think it's a it's a huge step from the SNL straight to the Elite League, as everyone knows. So, I mean, to go down there and gain experience in Millen Keynes and Peterborough and play kind of four import hockey where your British guys are maybe playing more of a, a premium role on the team as opposed to just making up the numbers, let's just say. So, I mean, that helped me in a big way. So, by the time I got to the Elite League, I kind of had a bit of confidence and I went. I wanted to go into the league playing the role that I knew I was able to play, as opposed to going in and just being told to play a role that might necessarily not benefit my game so much. So yeah, I, I knew that to be to get to the elite league that I was going to have to put in the work in, at the second level because the jump's just way too big right now. Yeah, that's what lot, that's what a lot of kids are finding up in Scotland right now. The jump, the jump to try and crack the elite league is is it's getting harder and harder every year. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll go, Steve, you want me? You, you, you okay? Go, go ahead. ahead. Okay, so, guys, um, just a couple of questions about, you know, your, your time when you were younger and coming through. Um, is there a coach that made an impression on you when you were younger? Um, 
and and it helped you make the step up or or give you some good life lessons that when you were younger that you can always think back on? Was there any coach at junior level that that, that would made a real impression on you? Stephen, that's quite hard for you, I'm afraid. You know fine well. <laughs> <laughs> he made, he, my, my coach made all the impressions for maybe some of the wrong reasons, but uh, yeah, well. he's actually my, my stepdad as well. So... Uh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, he had a massive impact on, on my career. As, and I had stopped playing hockey when I was young anyway before uh, I met him. So he, he kind of got me back into hockey when I was young. And um, yeah, and basically just, I think he I think he kind of made sure that, that he, he kind of he started the, the Glasgow Junior Club basically and got that running and then made sure that we were all uh, playing the best we can, but having as much fun at the same time. So it was uh, it was good memories, and it was definitely uh, that was definitely something that sticks with I think all of us that were there. You know, I know you got to play with some really good players there as well. Yeah, there was a few, yeah, yeah, but I can't remember the names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Matty, any, any for you, any good kind of junior memories of coaching that uh, stick out? Yeah, um, we had we had I think we had a really good really good setup in Sheffield back back when they were all Queens Road days before as Sheffield came along and. One guy I do remember was a guy called John Robotham. He played like ENL back in the day. He wasn't a great player, but he was a really good coach. And he kind of moved up with my age group. So I always kind of had him as a coach right up to EPL when he was at the Scimitars. Um, and the other one's Pete. I had Pete Russell in the under-18s, GB National. I didn't understand a word he was saying. <laughs> but uh, I obviously had him again last year and I could understand him a bit better. Yeah. Okay. Jordan, any, anyone from you? Any kind of coaches that stood out for you in your junior? Similar to Matty, I mean, uh, kind of the coaches following up the age groups. So I had a guy, John Gordon and Richard Phillips. They were the guys that kind of followed me up the age groups. But a coach that kind of stands out, kind of my breakthrough year was at 16 when Barry was my coach for the Comets. Oh, come on. <laughs> Don't pump your tires any more than you... <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, we had, a, we had a good year that year. I was only 16, so it was my first year playing senior hockey. And I think we won the treble, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, that, that seems to be the year for me that I kind of kick, kick started to the next level. Fist bump, Barry, fist bump. You've just okay. made his night. Yeah. yeah Payments in the post. We'll get that. We'll get this for the next month now. Never going to hear the end of this. Thanks, Jordan. You can go yeah. now. <laughs> just, just moving on. Mo- moving on. <laughs> um, just you guys are playing senior level. You played senior level. What do you think the, the, the game? How do you think the game could be improved in the UK, particularly for the for the British kids? How do you think the game could be improved? It's a tough question. Uh, the, obviously, obviously, the the leap from you know the the lower leagues up to the elite league is, is pretty big. So there has to be a way to bridge that. You know, a, a better way to bridge it. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if if you start if it starts from the bottom or it starts from the top up. I'm not sure what the best option is. If it starts from the top up, then I guess you have to lower the import numbers to give more kids and more opportunity. Um, I also think maybe changing the league, the the way the elite league is the format, because because if if you're on if you're on one of the top whatever, say you're in the top half of the league and it's all about the league race, right? You're all you're chasing the title. Every single game in the elite league is a must win game, just because of the way the format is, and, and so much emphasis is put on the league title. So there's, there's not really any opportunities for coaches to say, well, we'll rest a guy here and we'll get a kid in and we'll get him up. There's not that many opportunities. And well, for quite a few of the teams, at least, you know, and, and, and it goes for even you know, the whole league, really, you know, is, is a grind all year long, um, which is great in certain aspects, you know, and it, it's, it's really it's, it's a fun way to play as well. But it, it limits opportunities, I feel. Um, so it's, I guess that's one way, but... I don't know. It's, it's it's a tough question, really. There's a, there's a lot of things that could be be uh, spoke about on that. I'd say. Yep. Marty, any thoughts on? Yeah, I think I, I would have said the exact same. I probably would say reduce reduce the import numbers by two or three. Maybe I feel like a 11, 12 import league would be great. I think that gives uh, two or three spaces for young Brits to come through and play play the way into 
getting more minutes, like we're kind of like we did. And then um, it also gives top end Brits more responsibilities. You're not just going out to kill penalties. You're actually probably going to get some power play time and stuff. So I feel like, and you're still going to get those imports that uh, are beneficial for your national teams and stuff like that. I think, I think overall 12, 11, 12 is probably the optimum number. Jordan, any thoughts on that? You're a bit younger. Yeah, just I mean, yeah, the most most British guys seem to have kind of the same tune. I think we're all kind of getting to the stage when 14 is maybe a little bit too much, you know. I mean, it's taking guys till maybe 23, 24 to even break into the league because there's older guys still in certain spots. So it's I mean it's it's tough. There's limited spots and obviously everyone's battling for those spots, but I mean, if you just drop them a little bit, I mean, it gives guys a chance. And like the guys are saying, I think it, it would probably work for the best. Yeah, OK. OK, well, last question from me, guys, right? Um, Stephen, I'll start with you in this one, and it's good for everyone. Is there any kind of skills or anything that you wish you'd worked on more when you were younger? Uh, you're, you're specifically, obviously, for the young goalies that are on the call. Yeah, yeah. Um... I don't know if there's if there's one skill that I would have worked on, um, but it, it's basically, I, I think it's just really just maintaining the consistency in training, and and I always enjoyed basically you know doing whatever it took to stop pucks, and I, and I I feel like coaching goalies, I think it's it's not so much about you know technique when you're young, it's how keen you are to stop the puck, and I think that's. That's one thing that I, I sometimes see, you know, it, uh, in in, uh, in junior practices. It's you know, they, they might kids might look like they're they've, they've got the style, but if they're not not getting in the way of the puck, then you know the style doesn't matter at that age. And uh, I think if if you've got that keenness to stop pucks, then that'll take you uh, in good in a good uh, steps forward for sure. Wow, uh, Martin, you get anything you wish you'd worked on with your young guy? Any advice to these young kids that? Um, yeah. yeah, I think uh, obviously working on what you enjoy is is key at a young age because you, you obviously want to have fun and obviously scoring goals is, is the most fun you can have. But I think it's quite it's important to work on those things that you don't like probably because you're not good at those things. For example, skating or something like if you're not good at crossovers and you hate doing it, maybe you only do that a little bit until you get that technique down and then you'll probably find yourself enjoying it a lot more and you'll probably do it a lot more but I think not don't just do what you enjoy try and do a, a vast range of things Jordan? Yeah, kind of similar just what both those guys have said I mean I've found over my life that when I'm having fun on the ice I seem to always produce better and playing better I play better with a smile on my face so I mean Realistically, that, I think if you're having fun while you're doing it, that's that's the best thing you could do. But, I mean, looking back at uh, my career, there's there's not one thing I could really say I wish I'd worked on, but uh, maybe a couple of decisions along the way in my career. But no. apart, apart from that, like nothing individually I could put my finger on. So, yeah, as long as you're having fun and working hard, you should keep improving. Oh, okay, okay. Barry, over to you. Yeah, I've got two or three questions. Funnily enough, I had that question about influential coach, but that's okay. I've scored it out now. Yeah, you're hanging. <laughs> okay, John. Oh. John, tell me about that season from start to finish. Is that a white apple <laughs> range you've got there, Barry? That's it. Baz maybe remembers it a bit better than I do. I well, well, I had to, I had to watch it. <laughs> um, but kind of along a similar vein, although it doesn't have to just be a coach, I was wondering about the probably the, the best piece of advice that, that you've received maybe when you're coming up as a junior or something, something that just helped push you on the next level and go, actually, you know what, I want to make a go of this. I want to be a hockey player. Um, uh, that, that sort of moment, that light bulb moment, was there anything anything in, in your uh, your early years that, that really brought that home to you? Um, my, you want to... You're like uh, hard there. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there was a specific moment for me where, like, I would, like, it just clicked, and I thought that's just what I want to do. I kind of just came to a like a crossroads for me where I ever chose to go to uni or I tried playing in the elite league, and I chose the elite league. So, 
Um, yeah, not a specific moment where I thought, oh, I'm good enough to do this. So it was more of a, oh, let's go and try and see if I can see if I can do it sort of thing. All right, Murph. Uh, again, my my coach, my dad. I think I think he probably I think he had confidence in me, <clears throat> which maybe gave me the confidence to think that it was uh, something I could do, um, and and you know I think something that I could stick at and have a career at. But again, it's not at the time. It's not. It wasn't maybe. It wasn't what I was thinking at the time. I was just you know having fun and enjoying it and. And trying to do my best, and um, but yeah, I think I think he definitely had confidence in me, which gave myself confidence, I guess. Yeah, I think uh, one time that kind of springs to mind for me was uh, at the conference weekend. I mean, every year we always used to go down there, and the kind of the cool thing was to get one of those All Star jerseys at the end of the week. So, I mean, uh, I played that tournament maybe five, six times, and never got one. So I think it was my last tournament, second year 17s, and I finally got one. So that was obviously a huge achievement accomplished. And as I was collecting my jersey, uh, Bob Wilkinson, I'm pretty sure he's maybe passed away now, but uh, he he was a guy that had a lot of respect in English ice hockey. And he kind of pulled me to the side with my dad and said, kind of like, keep this kid going. Like he's uh, got a chance if he sticks at it. So I think that was one of the big moments for me when I kind of realized that if I do stick at this, then I could most likely make a career out of it. Yeah, good, good, yeah. Um, and other question I had, kind of changing it up a little bit. So you've all represented Great Britain at, at various levels. What's the sort of, any obscure places that you've been to and, and strange experiences? I know going away with GB, you end up going away to all these strange countries in Eastern Europe and stuff. Murphy probably got the most. <laughs> uh, I don't know what the, the, the strangest one was. Um, the coolest ones actually. We went to. I've been to Japan a couple of times, and that's that was some trip. Uh, both times that was uh, that was pretty good to be a part of those ones. Um, but yeah, well, I mean they were, they were definitely the furthest trips I've had. Um, but yeah, they're such they're they're tough going those trips. It's such a long fight there, and once you're there, you're either up all night or knackered during the day, and your stomach's just going all over the place, and you've got those games and high altitude as well, and and then uh, it's just a bit of a grind. But it's it's definitely something. Part being part of GB has been great. It's been just a great opportunity to to see other places, other countries, and and uh, play some good hockey as well against some good good teams and good players. Uh, Jordan, uh, a couple of trips. I mean, uh, nothing too crazy stands out. I mean, luckily enough, uh, lucky enough to win a gold medal in my last year of twenties, which was really cool in Estonia. But as far as it goes for crazy stories, like Murph said, those uh, those tournaments are pretty full on. So from the minute you you arrive, you're you're pretty much full tilt until the minute the last the last game's done. Yeah. I got I got I got pretty lucky. I, I wasn't in any outback uh, European place. I got to go to Tallinn, which is the Estonian capital. Um, I was in Hungary and Debrecen, and then I went to uh, somewhere in Holland for with a with a senior team. Yeah, that's the only three times I've been. So I've been pretty lucky. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, so we've got. Loads of questions now. <laughs> and, the, the and, and they go in all directions. And yeah. So um you want me to start? Go for it, Barry. Yeah. I'll go for it. Yeah. You're, you're, the, you're, you're the question guy. You're good at it. Question guy. Only one that can read. <laughs> um okay, so Jack M would like to know who's the best team you've played against? Um to, to each of you. <laughs> oh, I guess I, I play. I was lucky enough to play against uh, the uh, Boston Bruins uh, for the Giants. Um, so they're pretty tough to beat. I mean, it was, uh, <laughs> it was a pretty, uh, it was a pretty, uh, pretty cool experience, and one that I thought was was going to be 
I, I thought it was going to be special, but I didn't realise it. I think in the build up to the to the game, I, I kind of thought I was thinking, oh, this is pretty cool, you know. But we'll probably play like a you know a B team or something like that. And then the day, I think it was the day of the game, I walked in for a pre game skate, and the Bruins were on the ice. Uh, doing their pre-game skate and I could just I seen Chara just towering over everyone I seen Tim Thomas and all the, the lot of them the whole team and I just like I thought I thought what have we got ourselves into here like why are we playing the Boston Bruins and uh, I, I don't think I've been more nervous for any other game than the build up to that and uh, it was just right up until probably normal time when you get into the into the locker room and then all of a sudden it sort of becomes your sort of game, you know, your pre-game realistics, and you're just kind of, you get bit, get into the groove, but then it was afterwards, looking back, and it was a real cool experience. So, yeah, it was, it was definitely one of the best teams I played against. I remember, I remember seeing a picture in the handshake from that game, Morphin. It was you and Chara shaking hands. <laughs> yeah. I think there must have been near on two foot of difference between the two of you. Oh, easily. <laughs> he was massive. He was a wraparound on me in that game, and he was still on the other side of the goal when he wrapped it around. <laughs> Even I've, I've asked you before, what did he say to you? No, I just always wanted uh, to he, he was He was actually full of praise. He was, he was actually, after the game, he got on the mic. And in, 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 the, in the arena, he got on the mic and he, he thanked everybody and uh, he just said how, how great everything was and they had a great experience. And uh, I actually knew a guy who uh, was uh, working, I played, for, played with a guy who was working for the NHLPA at the time and he was over with them. And he said that he'd been on trips with all those teams before and he said they'd, they'd never do that, like they've never done that before. So I think they actually enjoyed their time in Ireland. <laughs> Possibly the hospitality as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Matty? Well, I don't think we can beat that one, can we? <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to use that trump card straight away. Eh? Yeah, I know. He should have gone last move. Um, <laughs> I was going to say the end of the Capitals. But... <laughs> I think Elite League-wise, I'd say the best team I've played against was that Nottingham team when they were like ran away with it for one year. I think Galby was playing there and stuff. That Jordan Fox guy was there that year and they ran away. But I thought they were the most complete team there's probably been in the league league while I've been in. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that one. Jordan? Uh, yeah. Uh, probably for me, nothing like the Bruins either. But uh, first time getting called up to the men's national team, we played uh, Poland in the Nottingham Arena. So, uh, yeah, those guys were pretty big, pretty fast. So that was probably the, the, the closest I've been to the top level. Yeah, okay. Um, Johnny, I don't know where Johnny's from, uh, but he wants to know how many fights you've been in. <laughs> I think it's zero between you all. <laughs> zero for me. <laughs> one, one, one elite league fight for me. I got jumped by Robert Farmer. <laughs> 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 I've known him since I was six. <laughs> he is that guy. <laughs> yeah, just just I think one in the elite league for me, and uh, maybe a couple in the second league, but not usually through choice. So, yeah. Okay, that's the that's the customary fight question out of the way. <laughs> uh, Zach Doherty would like to know, and he's age 11 from Lanarkshire, uh, he would like to know from each of you how hockey has changed your life. Um, Jordan, you want to go first on that one? Yeah, I feel like it's not really changed my life. It's kind of all I've ever knew. So it's kind of it's kind of given me a life more than anything. So, yeah, I don't think it's, it's changed it much. I mean, it's like that's from an early age. It's all I've ever wanted to do, so... Yeah, it just it is my life, and now it, it will continue like that for a, for a fair few years. Yeah, that was that was deep. That answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was fine. <laughs> Murph. Yeah, I, I like I, like I said before, it's, it's given me opportunities to to travel places and see other countries and 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 have a career out of it as well. And yeah, and and then also and just meet a lot of people and, and, and uh, make a lot of good friends through it as well. And it's, I, th I think actually as well, like 
I, you know, I obviously playing for a long time, I've met a lot of people, but, you know, memories from when I was a kid playing hockey still stand up as, as some of the strongest memories I have and some of the best friendships as well. So that, I think that is one of the biggest things, I guess, from it is, you know, my best mates growing up were all playing hockey and and we still uh, we still talk about those days even now. Yeah, right. Yeah, so uh, obviously helped me travel the world, been everywhere in Europe, Australia, blah, 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 and had friendships. You don't get friendships like you do from your teammates, again, from a young age. Like Murph said, um, moving up here allowed me to meet my wife and have a family and stuff and, and live up here. So, I, yeah, again, it's not changed my life. It, it, it is my life. It's given me a life. Again, got deep like counts, but... Yeah, well, I, <laughs> it's an emotional podcast. This is an emotional. Uh, <laughs> I know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hold on, hold on a sec, second. I've got one thing to show y'all. You can you see that? Yeah. 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 Thanks, Mac. Mac did that. So, there's the big man there. Mac needs to charge his phone. <laughs> going down yeah but Mac, yeah yeah so there you go i always wonder what did he say what did he say okay, okay. um finley sawyers uh would like to know from each of you do you have any superstitions and any backstory for for why you have those superstitions and if you've got loads maybe just like the top one or two <laughs> Um, Matt, you want to go first, don't one? Uh, I'm pretty easy, though. I'm not, I don't have any. Maybe I, like, no. maybe I put my left side on before my right, but I think that's just out of habit, not, not a superstition. Yeah, I'm pretty easy going. I can, I don't have to be ready at four minutes before phase or whatever, you know, not one of those guys. Yeah, all right. Anyway, Murph? I, I, no, I'm pretty way back as well. Uh, it's, it's more routines, I guess. Um, and it's habits, you know, just, just getting into to the same routines uh, every game. Um, I, I, I mean, I suppose you could argue that's a superstition, but it's really just a, a way of mentally preparing yourself, I guess, and, and just having the same, same routine, everything's everything's the same sort of thing, and, and keeping that uh, as consistent as possible, I think, I think helps, I guess. Uh, but it's one of those things, if you if, you know, I guess pretty laid back, saying, saying like my, you know, if, if something isn't something not in the in its routine, then it's it's not a big deal. You know, it's it's not not a big superstition. Yeah, Jordan. Yeah, kind of kind of similar to those guys too. I mean, nothing too crazy. Left before right, just little things like that, taping sticks. But I mean, nothing too crazy. Um, I'm not I'm not freaking out if I'm not on time like the week before, but. The only thing I might do is if, if I do have a bad game, I'll maybe tweak a couple little things, but I probably won't think about it much until I get to the rink and then just figure it out from there. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I remember one guy, I forget his name. His name was Greg something. He played for uh, for Dundee. He was one of the imports um, probably about, I don't know, eight, eight or nine years ago. And he, he had proper like superstitions he would not leave his stall until he touched certain places and put his put his gloves on and off four times and turned his helmet around three times and you know all this crazy stuff everybody else is on the ice and he was still trying to get it right in the changing room <laughs> just that, that sounds more like ocd than superstition yeah. yeah but he i don't know how he got through the day it was unreal like every time he went on the ice it was like that it only lasted a year. Maybe that's why. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like hard work. I know. Tired himself out just for that. <laughs> um, Marco from Lanarkshire under 15s. He wants to know uh, who was the best player you played with, and what what did they do that made them the best? Um, Jordan, I got you first. That one. Um, played with I. One that, one that kind of sticks out, I played with a Slovenian import in Milton Keynes, Blaz Emersic. He was an older guy and uh, he was just one of those guys that no matter what, what rink we went to, he had 
respect from every single guy on the ice. And he was one of those guys that was maybe 35 years old, but had the best body on the team and took care of his took care of his body, uh, cared for his job. And yeah, he's probably one of the top players, I top professionals anyway, that I've ever played with. Right, uh, my uh, probably the most naturally gifted player I've played with is Scott Pitt. He uh, just one of those guys that just comes so easy to him. He doesn't really look like he's trying, but yeah, he's, he was he was good to watch from the bench anyway. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Murph. Uh, yeah, I struggle with it. I, I struggle with this question. I, I feel like I've, I've played with quite a few players that are. They're all, you know, really skilled, and it's hard to pick one of them. Um, I've always, I always liked uh, Brandon Benedict. Um, and he played for Panthers, played for the Giants for a long time as well. I thought he was just, just a great player, you know, just great work ethic and and did everything right. And uh, but also, you know, had uh, obviously playing with uh, Shieldsy as well, which is, you know, he's just such a talented goal scorer and just. It's it's hard to look past him when he you know he breaks all these records and and uh, and also he's he's my cousin so I have to be a little bit uh, biased there uh, and also I, I, back uh, back in my Dundee days at Scott Young playing with him uh, the, the, what a legend he was and and super talented like I think he probably would have been he probably should have been a, a top NHL player probably of his day um, but yeah it, he's a Definitely one that sticks out of my mind from uh, back in the day. Yeah, he was one of those players that you never quite knew how old he was. You just knew he was old, but he was still <laughs> yeah, better. I think he was else probably, yeah, <laughs> he was probably old from whenever he's first. He probably looked like that for when he played, played junior, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. I'll, I'll do one more, and then Stephen or Martin, you can jump in. Um, Carl McHattie would like to know who is the best player that has shot against you. I'm, I'm guessing this is for you, Murph. Uh, I don't know. Um, see, I'm going to go with uh, just thinking of shot. We got Robbie Sandrock, who used to play for the Giants. He was uh, he had just an absolute cannon. Um, and would had did score a couple of goals from like his own end as well. <laughs> he's just like that hard of a shot, and he's able. He was able to like skip it as well, so he could shoot from his own end and make it hard, but skip as well, right in front of the goalie. So and then and practice as well. He just had a rocket too. So I guess that uh, would go with that. Or uh, hardest shot at least. Okay, Baj, you want me to take over? Yep, it's all yours. All right, let me just find where we are here. Right, okay, here we go. So this one's for Murph and Matt. How happy were you when you had your testimonials? Explain, describe the feeling when you were first told you were going to te get a testimonial and then the night itself. I'll, I'll, um, yeah, yeah, I was, I was, uh, I was it's, a, it's a huge honour to get your testimonial. To play 10 years for, a, for any club is... Is, is incredible and to get to get um notice for it and have people come and celebrate it with you is amazing not just fans but like you see all your old teammates and it's everyone you want to be there but as for the night itself i don't think i enjoyed it that much because it's kind of like a wedding where you just you're so bothered if everyone else is having a good time you, i didn't really quite enjoy it as much as i could and I'm even more happy that I did it in February and didn't wait till March, so I wouldn't have got it in with all this coronavirus going on. <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree. It's quite it's quite a stressful event um, for the players or for the player who you know testimonial. Um, but yeah, it is, it's a great honor, and it's I think it's just a it's just a really cool achievement to to, to be playing for the team, you know, whichever team it is for ten years, and then uh, have that celebrated as well and. By the end, you know, the, after the once the game starts, it's it's fun. It's a bit of fun, and then after the game, it's uh, it was just it was a huge sort of relief, but also you know a real uh, it was a real cool honor as well, and, and and felt like a good achievement too, which was nice. When did when did you get told? Do you get told at sort of the start of that season? Yeah, for me it was. Uh, I can't remember if I was 
I've ever was under contract. It was basically it was part of your contract talks for that tenth season for me for me anyway. Um, and it was you know it was it sort of they they said that they they obviously want me back and they they wanted to, to offer me a testimonial as well. So it was yeah it was it was quite early on. I think it was probably summertime when I when I knew it was going to happen. I, I got my I got my in my contract when it was like season eight. I signed like a three year deal with a testimonial for my tenth. Yeah, got it in there early so they couldn't take it away from me. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Okay, next question from Johnny. What we got from Johnny? How many games did you play last season? I told you they could be random questions, guys. Last season? Is it, what, you, was, what is last season? When was last season? <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a long time ago, doesn't it? I don't know. <laughs> like, what, what, when did the season finish? Mid March, you guys must must all play at about fifty each, I guess, right? Yeah. Okay, Scott Campbell, would you guys like to see the import numbers drop to see more kids given the opportunities to develop the way you have? I, I think that's definitely an option for sure that would work. I mean, for me, I think I think when I uh, started playing in the BNL, I think it was. Eight is that right, Lynchy? Is it eight imports? Yeah, it was eight back then. Yeah. Yeah, and and you know there was you know solid players like great players like British players and, and all playing uh, good roles as well and it felt like a, a pretty good mix and of uh, import to, to British players ratio. Um, yeah, it was about a fifty fifty split, wasn't it? Yeah, and you know and. You could go, I think, anywhere. If eight, even if it was ten around there as well, you still you still getting a lot of opportunities for players. So, uh, I mean, obviously, there's a, de a debate as well that the standard could be higher. I guess if there's more imports, but it depends on the imports that are brought in as well. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's definitely it definitely could help a lot of players that are on the cusp of breaking into the league get that better opportunity and then improve. For, from there as well, and then become, you know, uh, solid players in the league. I think a 10 import league now would be better than the 10 import league was 10 years ago. I think the import standard has gone up that much that it would be a, a good standard just to have 10. It would be a better standard than it was 10 years ago when it, when it was kind of, when Adam Walker was good. <laughs> 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 um, Gordon, what's your thoughts on that? I think it, it can only be positive for the game, I feel. I mean, I don't know, like, uh, yeah, 14 is just, it seems like a lot. It seems like a, a lot. So, I mean, uh, speaking to all the guys I've spoke to across the UK, I mean, the, the message is pretty similar wherever you go. So, I mean, change would be good, but whether it will happen or not, I still don't know. I don't know if our opinions really matter on the fact, but we'll... I think uh, there's more chance of it happening now just because of the times. Yeah. Now that might, it might open the door for, for more players to come through if the league has to, to lower the imports just because of obviously um, having, the big, having the year off and stuff. I don't know how teams are going to be able to just bounce back to 14 imports. And, and, and I'm pretty sure there was... There was talk of change for this season. It just obviously uh, hasn't happened, but I don't know if it was getting lowered by one or something. I'm not sure. But I, th I think uh, I think with Brexit and the the work permit situation as well, well that could potentially bring the, the numbers down a little bit going forward. Who knows? It's a very popular question. Every webinar we, we seem to put on, no matter who's guest speaking, that question always seems to come up. I think it's everybody's... It's everybody's dream to see the numbers go down a little bit, but not yeah. lose, not not lose the standard at the same time, you know. Yeah, that's just the, the, it's, it's the the tricky part is is I think the players that have that were already established in the league have improved their sales. You know, the, I think the GB team probably improved because of the standards has gone up, and guys have had to you know lift their standards and keep up with the standards and you know rise above it for some guys as well. And I think that's probably helped. The, the the guys were already established, but it just makes it harder for the, the the ones coming through, and it also makes it harder for the GB team in the future because the ones coming through aren't getting the opportunity. Yeah, 
you know they've they've got a massive jump to just to catch up with the, the the GB team. Yeah, that's a concern as well. Yeah. Okay. So Mikey Duffy uh, from Lanarkshire has asked, "What's the best path to take to get into an elite league team?" I guess I guess he's asking the question as a mm-hmm. well. I know Mikey's around 30, 13 years old. So for a kid that's 13, 14, 15 year old, say. What's the best path to take, or what's the best bit of advice you could give them to try and help them crack the elite league? Again, it's a tough question nowadays because it is it is a path that's quite hard. I think, like the guys were saying, the, the jump up from from the from from the leagues is pretty big. So I know I think it seems to be more popular now for kids to be going abroad. Whether it's the states or Canada, or whatever, but it seems to it seems to be an option. But it's not an easy option. It's not just uh, there's no there's no simple option. I don't think. But it's getting that opportunity it is tough, and I think you need to have someone there on your side as well, which makes it even harder. Yeah, I've got lots of got Liam Kirk as well, Stephen. I mean, he's not he's not done the amount, but he's he's went really far. He's done really well. Yeah. Without, going to, without going to prep school or junior hockey in Canada. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, I think when, when every kid in British ice hockey heard Liam getting drafted, it's made them all think, well, if, if it can happen to him, it can happen to them as well. Um, yeah. Kids, we're actually going to be really fortunate in two or three weeks. We're going to have Liam Kirk on here one Friday night, so you'll, you'll get a chance to ask him some questions. Um, yeah, I think I think another boy is just getting got put in for the draft. Is he not? Is it Alex Graham or something? Has he not got put in for this year's draft? I don't know. Yeah, I think I think the, the the boy from Sheffield he just scored a lot of goals this weekend for the Steel Dogs. I think he's in this year's draft, sixteen, seventeen. Yeah. yeah, I know Alex. Alex is a good player. I had him for a couple of years with with the British Sixteens. He's a bit, he's very talented. Yeah, I, I, but I, I hadn't heard that. No, I think that's what I saw it on Twitter anyway. Maybe maybe Marty with. Um... Liam getting drafted, maybe the NHL selectors are looking a bit more at UK. You know, it's yeah. got a bit of a bit of focus to that, so every kid now has that opportunity. Yeah, well, I think just before Kirky went as well, Davy Phillips did pretty well over there at a training camp, and I mean, I'm sure Benny and Davis and that was over in East Coast. So was, teams are more aware that there's there's a there's actually ice hockey in the UK now so yeah I think as well the national team like I was saying before mm-hmm. they, I think they have improved and, and being in the top top pool as well that, that that obviously that obviously shines a good good light on the British hockey as well so hopefully that brings more opportunities I guess okay okay Rudy has asked how many hours a day did you train when you were kids he's from Belfast he's 10 so were you guys were you guys lucky in juniors where you, you managed to get a nice three or four times a week or were you at clubs where you were practicing once, maybe twice a week if you were lucky? I think uh, growing up, most of my development felt like it was probably done off the ice rather than on the ice. I mean, we were probably restricted to maybe one, two hours per week. So, I mean, there's only so much you can get done in that time. So, I mean, having a hockey goal at the house from an early age, playing street hockey with my friends, that's... I feel like that's pretty much where I learned most of my skills. And then when I went to the rink, it was just time to sort of put those skills onto the ice. So, yeah, I think uh, definitely working in the street and working at home is a, a good way to improve. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we had a ton of ice time or anything growing up. Um, but I think I was fortunate enough to, to play at, at different levels as well. So, with you know, under, so you're under, under 12 and playing with under 14s as well. So getting multiple practices on one night and then, you know, playing two two games in, in one day sometimes as well. So just, just as much ice time as possible. Yeah, I think it was it was, it was, was the, the key for me. It was it wasn't it wasn't there all the time, but when it was there, I think we got the most out of it. Yeah, same with me. Once a week we'd we'd practice play I think it's like Thursdays or something and then I like an hour when and, and then when I got to under fourteens when you start playing up age groups you get you get two or three sessions a week but even still that that's not it's not enough but yeah. it's the ice time is the issue isn't it in the UK yeah we we in Scotland we've got quite contrasting clubs we've got two or three clubs that manage to get their kids on the ice three sometimes four times a week which is great 
We've got other clubs where, yeah, there's some kids maybe only get on the ice once a week for one hour through the restrictions that they've got at the rink and things like that, which isn't ideal. But any any ice any ice you can get kids, take it. Never turn it down. Uh, next question is a good one. Uh, it's from Brody K. Um, we've not had this question yet, but it's, it'll get you guys thinking. If you were selected for the World Championships in Latvia, that's in, any one of the three of you, or if all, all, all three of you, for instance, if you were to be selected for the GB team, how would you start to prepare, given that there's no ice? I wouldn't eat for about a month, try and ship a bit of timber I've put on. <laughs> no, it's hard, it's hard right now, because we're not, there's no end goal for us at the minute, so it's, there's no motivation and stuff. But if, if that was, if we got, like, say, notification that we might get picked in two months, then I'm sure, being the professionals we are, we would uh, knuckle down and do some do some off ice work and try and get on the ice wherever we could. It's a good question though, because there's a lot a lot of other countries obviously that Britain are going to be coming up against our training and playing, whether it be in behind closed doors or whatever. There's we're, we're one of few countries that put everything shut really. It's it's um that's a good question. Marf it's uh, yeah, it would it would be it'd be very it'd be very tough to prepare for something like that uh without proper training and I think I think that we we uh, I think there's maybe ice once a week here for some of the sort of kids that are in the GB programs I think, um, but the, the thing is if you're 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 trying to train for a level that's um, basically higher than anything that we've ever played really, um, and you, you're trying to train for that level with with kids and if you don't have that kind of training going into it, it's going to be tough to prepare for and it's going to be a tough, tough year for GB, I think, for sure. I know that some of the guys are in some of those countries that are still playing and uh, that's great for them, but as, as a squad, it's going to be tough to prepare for, for sure. Um, I don't know what I would do, to be honest. Jordan, what do you think? If you got the phone call, what would you do? I don't know. I mean, I'd, I'd probably be pretty anxious about it. I'm not very prepared to, to say the least but I mean like that I don't think I could cross that bridge until I would really come to it so uh, yeah like that we've we've not skated for a long time now so it's not really something that's in the back of my mind but if it came up it would it would probably most likely take me by surprise more than anything but we'll have the park you'll be fine <laughs> good question uh, next part next question Jim Parson Stephen has your boy had the pads on yet no chance. <laughs> How old is he? Uh, he's just on five. He's uh, he was starting to play. He's he's starting as a player for sure. Um, he's not getting the pads right away. If he wants to later on, then fine. Um, but the thing is that it these times are so weird, you know. Like he he was just getting into hockey, and all of a sudden there's there's nothing, and you know the, the, there's just no sport on at the moment anyway. So it's it's. It's uh, it's just such a weird time, but yeah, he's he's uh, he's keen into his sport anyway. So he'll uh, if he wants the pads, he can have them. But he's not getting. Uh, I'm I'm definitely not pushing him that way. Um, and uh, <laughs> I also kind of feel like I'd be happy if he played some other sport uh, as well. You know, just he can do whatever he wants basically. But yeah, I, I have a feeling he might he might he might tend towards the, the goalie at some point, but not yet anyway. You're just thinking about the cost of the pads, aren't you? Exactly. <laughs> I'm just thinking about it. <laughs> hey, Scott Campbell saying, um, in the in the ISL, one of the seasons, all the teams agreed to play. Oh, sorry, let me start that again. Is that a, it's not a question. Is it a statement? It's probably your best to answer it anyway, Murph. In the ISL, one of the seasons, all the teams agreed to play their backup goalies for the whole of the Challenge Cup. And then further down, it's I think it follows on says, do you think something like that would work now? Have I got that right, Scott? Have you just asked two questions, but in two different parts? One, one question in two different parts? I think you have. Yeah, basically, I, I hit the send button too early. All right, OK. So in the ISL, one of, in the old Super League, one of the seasons, all the teams agreed to play their backup goalies for the whole of the Challenge Cup. Do you think something like that would work now? Murph, really, this one's angled at you. It's also asking and reducing the numbers. Like, pick one tournament and go with eight imports in that tournament in order to bring players in from, like, Solway or wherever else teams can find them. 
as a, just pick one tournament as a development tournament for the Super League for the, the Elite League teams. It's a good idea. It's, it's definitely not a bad idea. There's no reason why it couldn't work either. You know, if if teams are are committed to it, uh, and and all and all teams are on board, then yeah, there's no reason why it couldn't work. Um, it's just getting teams to commit to it. Um, every sort of you know, all, every title is, is is kind of sought after at the moment. So and there's there's pressure on all the teams to to succeed. So it's it's that's where it's tough for the teams, the the owners to and the coaching staff to to give that opportunity because they are under pressure. And then you know they don't want to they don't want to fail by giving some kids the opportunity. But if it's a predetermined thing, then there's no reason why that couldn't work. Yeah, it's a good idea. Okay, cheers, Scott. I'm sure they had a cup competition um, for the Scottish teams in the Elite League a way back, maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago or so. That was mainly, it was the first year Dundee were in it, and it was mainly British players they used with like four imports or something. But I remember being at Edinburgh, Stars versus Edinburgh, and there was like 20 people in the rink. You know, yeah, that was yeah. just... They did something similar years and years and years ago in the old BNL as well. Murphy were maybe kicking around there at the time. They did that best of British league where it was a non yeah. non import. Were you there at the time or were you somewhere else? I don't know if that was I, I remember that, but I can't remember if I played in it or not. They did a best of British league. No imports were allowed to play in it, so it was all the British yeah. players on the team where well for instance the Flyers had players up from the Kestrels and the Capitals had players up from their SNL team. But um, all the games were midweek, and again, Barry, nobody really came in. Nobody, fans didn't really support it. They weren't really interested, to be I, honest. I think, that, I think that that's. I think if, if something is going to be done like that, it has to be done done right, and uh, and still have that competitive edge to it. You know, yeah, like where 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 there's no, you know. It, there's no the fans don't think of any less of it as well. It is still uh, a big deal for everyone involved. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one, CJ from Fife. What have you been doing to keep fit during lockdown, Jordan? You want to start off with this one? Um, I mean, it's obviously it's been pretty tough because uh, a lot of our work's mainly done in the gym. So with the gyms closed, it's it's been more or less home workouts. I ordered myself some of those. Uh, the bands that you put in your, your door frame and you could kind of get a workout with them. But apart from that, a lot of running, a lot of cycling and going for walks as well, like hiking too. So, yeah, just been trying to stay active more than anything. Matt? Exactly, exactly the same, mate. Right? Yeah, it's, it's just so hard just to doing the Joe Wicks workout every morning. I don't know if you were doing it as well, but <laughs> yeah, it's pretty tough. It's been tough, but trying to get through it. You get a workout you can join on Sunday at 12 o'clock, Matty. I don't want to embarrass myself, mate, <laughs> to be honest. Maybe I'll have a workout on Sunday. <laughs> Martin, you want to take a few questions? Yeah, yeah. Just look at where we are. Um, just up to CJ. Question from Brody. Do any of you do brain training to improve your cognitive brain function to improve your game? A deep question as well from Brody. Does uh, PlayStation count? The only training I do is study. Uh, brain training, that's the only thing I do is study. Study, yep. Matty, you ever done any kind of brain training to try and improve your game? Any kind of seminars or anyone got um, any kind of, uh, you know, mindset kind of coaching courses and like that to help the game? You know, uh, just a few crosswords for me. Do Sudoku. <laughs> <laughs> I know, uh, I, I don't know if you follow Ben Bounds on Twitter. He's got one of those uh, virtual reality. Uh, with this. Did you see that, Murph, with the blocker and catcher thing he's got going on in no, Austria? No. He's, like, he's got like a VR headset. Yeah. He's got the two things and he people shoot at him and he makes saves in his living room <laughs> and stuff. Typical Boundsy, but... Uh, <laughs> That, that's the only thing I've ever seen. Jordan, you anything? Any done any? Uh, maybe the closest I've came to someone like that was buying like a mindset book. I bought a book a couple of years ago. It was called the the Champion's Mind. 
Right. And uh, if I read a few pages of that before heading to the rink, that uh, just kind of got me in a mindset that was ready to play. So yeah, that's pretty much about it. Nothing, nothing too crazy on that side. Okay. Um, I think I think this would be for you, Stephen. And I shoot out. Have you ever? Or maybe not. That that suit flipped a goalie. I think it's maybe for Marty and Jordan then. It's not for Stephen. Uh, I didn't flip. know. I'd be good. Do you say, could we do it? Uh, have you ever done it? I've never done it. No, I'm, I only chase license down. Ca- County could probably do some stuff like yeah, that. You just keep it for the, for the next the next round of games. But don't want to give the game away. Yeah, that's it. Jordan, you done anything like that? That's what was the question? Flip. Sorry, could I do have you, ever, have you ever, and I'm sure, have you ever that suit flipped a goalie? Never that suit flipped a goalie, but... Uh... I scored a nice one for GB, the one-handed deke, and that was for the gold medal, so that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah. no, Not a big deal. No, no, big, no dark, dad suit moves, so that's... Uh, Did Barry show you that one? Yeah, we used to stay behind after practice, and he'd yeah. teach me. That, that's good. Good, well done, Baz. Well done. Um, so next one from Callum McHatty uh, to Murph. Uh, how many fights have you been in? I can remember one. Great question twice, sir. Huh? You remember one, eh? Yeah. Uh, is that? I, I, I think I don't think I was in much. Oh, of we, we were all involved in it at the fight. Oh, was that? Was that uh, against five? Against Indeed. And remember the and and it was against Indeed and Fife. We were all. Oh, in Fife and like off. Uh, it was coming off the ice, yeah, was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that one. And that was just. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I've never been in a, a, a one-on-one fight. Uh, no one wants to take me. <laughs> Too tough. Too yeah. tough. Uh, we've got a question here from Ben Strachan. Uh, that's a bit interesting. What's the pee like? <laughs> 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 Just is sitting in the west wing of his house right now. He was <laughs> in a quality home. <laughs> Jordan's still sitting in Dundee, but... Ch- Chad is still for him saying, are you really getting paid that much? Yeah. <laughs> Just nod and smile. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Ben. I don't think we can get you the P45 details for the guys or tax returns. You know, you get more... Not, I know, not enough. We'll say not enough. Not yeah. enough. Always not enough. Never enough. I'll, Never. I'll have more success getting Donald Trump's tax returns. <laughs> um, Ashton, keep it clean for the wee ones. From Jack M... Do you play NHL? I think they mean Xbox or PlayStation or whatever. Do you play yeah. NHL? And do you play hockey? Yeah. yeah, I play a little bit. Mostly Warzone just now, though. I like that Call of Duty. That's what me and my mates are playing quite a bit just now. No, no NHL. We bit NHL, but nah, mainly mainly Warzone right now. Oh. Missing out. You used to get a wee trip to get the Sega thumb. The thumb was that, so you played Sega all night long. <laughs> um, Matty, you play, you play Xbox, PlayStation? No, I, I'm not I'm not really a gamer, mate. I'm, I used to play when I used to be single and live with a couple of guys, but not, not anymore. I've got two two little kids to look after. I don't have time to be, yeah, yeah. To be playing games. Uh, this one is from Mac to you, Marsh Stephen. Um, how many shutouts have you had in your career? Well, it's actually from Harris, his son. Um, I bet you know the answer, but you don't want to. You don't want to say you know, do you? I, I actually don't know. <laughs> I, I, I actually, I think I've got around. I don't know. It's it's between twenty five and thirty for the Giants because I know, I know that because there was a quiz last year at some point. We had like a we we did a trip on the ferry with the fans and there was a quiz and it came up and I didn't know the answer and the TI team I was on were expecting me to know the answer they obviously think I got it wrong but I know I still would have get still get it wrong now but it's around say twenty six or something like that but other than the Giants I have no idea. Okay, okay. Um, what's next one from Joe to everyone? What sort of off ice training did you use? Oh, but, but previous and before, uh, oh. when I was when I off ice training for me is is more about uh, 
it became more about maintenance for me. So it was a lot of band work, a lot of stretch and sort of work, uh, working on mobility and, and just uh, core strength sort of thing for me. So it was nothing really heavy for me, really. It was more about just keeping it, uh, keeping it loose, really, more than anything. Matty, any kind of off-ice work before the season, during the season? I think in the summer, in the summer, I would uh, lift a bit heavier than during the season. But I, I wasn't really like a heavy lifter. I'd be more plyometrics sort of thing. I'd like jumping and trying to stay like uh, explosive and stuff like that. But yeah, I wasn't the guy who would go and squat as much as as heavy as I could. I, I never, I was too boring for me that. So I like to just try and have a bit of fun and just do quite a few jumps and stuff. And I know Count, Count is a big, big squatter, aren't you, Count? Yeah, Kenny, what do you do? No, not much. I mean, like that. <laughs> uh, no, my but a big part of my game is skating. So I mean, fitness is a big thing for me. Leg core strength is a big thing. But I mean, I usually like to give myself about two or three months before the season to kind of prepare and not just my body but my mind as well. Going into that mind frame day in day out, it's it's quite an adaption from like that going from being unemployed in the summer and just kind of relaxing so yeah it's uh um yeah sorry what was the question again <laughs> <laughs> my don't, worry. There. don't worry yeah we'll, we'll, we'll move on yeah um okay um this is from uh colin and cami lees um murph do you have a memorable save that you've made in your career uh yeah, I guess there's a few stick out. There's one that uh, uh, um, it was, I think it was my first year for the Giants, and it was uh, we went to playoff finals and it was a shootout. And uh, I made made a save, and then we went down and scored to win the, to the finals. So it's it's a pretty big memory, uh, and it's all it was it's also it's been it's you know it was a big moment for the Giants as well. So it's it sort of gets played back every every now and again, so that's kind of helped refresh it in my mind. But yeah, I guess it was pretty cool. It was, the, the, the playoffs are... Uh, it's funny, that's what I was talking about before. The, the league is, is, is so big and it's such a grind. It's like every single weekend, every single game. Whereas the playoffs, it's... What is it? Like um, four, six, six, four, six to four games, four, six games, something like that. So... They shouldn't be the hardest thing to win, but when you do win it, it is is it's a fun way to end the season, and, and that's a, definitely a cool memory to have. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're going to test your memory here from Crawford Murray. Think of the name. Um, he's Ross Murray's son. Uh, from Lanarkshire Line, plays for us. Do you remember the time in Glasgow Juniors when my uncle Martin Murray broke your brand new goalie helmet in practice? I actually do remember that, yeah. That was the because I, I used to I used to wear the, the old bucket chauffeur yeah. helmet. Yeah. And that was actually the first mask I ever got. Uh and I got it from Canada. Came back. I think it was maybe the first practice wearing it back in Glasgow. And yeah. uh, uh, I think it was I think it was a dodgy puck had chunks in it that just smashed the helmet. And then I, I went back to the old Jofa for another good few years after that. Okay. I've got, my heart. I've got a comment from Jim, Jim Patterson. Apparently, Chara said to you, do you know Colin Wilson? <laughs> um, you think he was asking me where a good night club was? Well, Belfast. <laughs> um, so this one's to your Finley Sawyers. Who's the fastest play, player you've played with in your team? I think uh, last season... Uh, we had a guy called Kevin DeFore, and I'm pretty sure guys now he maybe had about 20, 30 breakaways last year. So, yeah, he was he was a really good skier, really fast. And he score? <laughs> quite a lot. Really? He missed a lot too, but yeah, he, he, he put quite a lot away, yeah. Okay. Marty, fastest player? Uh, between two, uh, Vaclav Stupka, he was on our team, I think, two years ago. He, he, same as same as the county's guy. He had about fifty-seven breakaways a game. And a uh, guy from a while ago, he played in Newcastle, and then came up to us. Was Tom's heart man is to just he used to just fly around. It wasn't even funny trying to keep up with these guys. Okay. Uh, question from Scott Campbell: 
uh, for Murph. Is there one thing you can pinpoint that you did year after year to ensure that the Giants didn't consider signing a, an import goalie? Bribe them? I don't know. Get older? Get uh, I think I think I, I don't know. I I think I really tried to be consistent, you know, where, um, throughout my time with the Giants, I, I, and like I said, I I tried to prepare the same for every single game and and make sure I was uh, giving the the team the best opportunity to to win games, and um, I, th- I think I, I managed to to pull it off for a good a good length of time anyway, and and I think that I think that was the key. It was just making sure I was. Uh, committed to every single game and, and take each game as it comes, and also I think every 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 game, but more so every season as well. Are you trying to prove yourself um, and and not get too comfortable? I think is is key as well. Um, and I think that it makes it a little bit easier to do that when in the team teams like Elite League that they tend to have decent turnaround. So there's new guys coming in every year, and you and you want to you want to commit yourself and prove yourself to them that, that you know that you belong in that uh, and to play as in the top level in, in the country and and try and outplay them as well, which is which is also it's it's uh, definitely something that can get you going as well. But yeah, I think that I think just trying to stay stay uh, consistent helps. Great question from Matt. Did you enjoy having your old and current teammates at your testimonial? Yeah, it's good. It's quite surreal, though. Like the, I just saw saying, uh, I had a one of these things planned chat last week. It was, it, it was at a moment where I was like, there's never going to be this group of guys on the ice again, ever, sort of thing. So it's good. It was good to see all friends, and and they a lot of guys brought their wives over and stuff as well. So it was good to all be together again, and then see how the current team got on with the older guys and share stories and share. Just a couple of beers and stuff, so that's good. Martin, you can... Uh, Sorry, I muted myself there. Sorry. Um, so, guys, just a quick question. You all, what is your favourite ice rink to play in? <laughs> Come on, Martin, what's your favourite rink? It's got to be Glasgow. Yeah, I've got to say Glasgow. Do you mean like away rig though? Because you've got to say it. Wait, 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 let's see which which your which your favourite away rig then. I like I like Sheffield. I think I like it's got the, they've got the best showers, and I, I get to see <laughs> my family when I go go home. And it's obviously they get they they got potential to get seven eight thousand fans, which is good. Belfast is is probably second. Apart the only reason why it's second is because I have to go on the boat across, and it's a, it makes me feel sick every single time. Uh, at best away. Let's go for best away because your 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 home rank's got to be your favourite, right? Yeah, I mean you can't really beat your home atmosphere, really. That's and that for me, it's kind of what it's about. I think uh, it's it's tough. I, I like I like playing in quite a few. I, like, I also I actually like playing in, in Brayhead. Um, good atmosphere there. I think it's it's a great rank for for the fans as well. You know, it's it's always a good atmosphere in there, and it's cool going going back home as well. Um. Same with same with Fife. Uh, it's not the nicest place to play, but it's it's always a great rowdy atmosphere, and that, uh, and I love that about it. I think it's great. I think it's one of the definitely still like you know the best hockey uh, based you know arena or rink, whatever you want to call it. You know, just just oh. the, the the sheer rowdiness, and I guess uh, Nottingham's pretty good as well. But I guess I'd probably pick Brayhead, I suppose. Hey. Uh, yeah, I'd probably have to say for me, Nottingham. I uh, I done a little spell there for a few months. I sent a two way when I was maybe about eighteen. So walking into the arena for training camp, that's the first time I kind of had that uh, professional feeling when you walk in and eight, seven, eight thousand seats, whatever it may be. So kind of every time I go back there, it's uh, yeah, it feels special to play there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. Next one. Collie number 11 has asked, um, are any on the NHL 20 or 20? I think we've covered that, Collie, earlier on. Uh, Zach Doherty, to everyone, have you ever chipped a goalie? Or even better, have you chipped Murph? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I've 
dig to goalie before, like maybe on Sunday league, but no, he's hockey. Not in a, not in a game. Okay. No, not yet. Um, I'll ask this question. This question is for um, Job and Matty, but then I'll ask another question to uh, Stephen. Have you ever scored a hat trick? Who and if you do, do you remember it? And who was it against? Elite League hat trick. I've only scored one. I scored it against Edinburgh. Uh, but yeah, I only ever scored one Elite League one. Oh, you got a hat trick yet? Not yet. I had a couple, maybe two goal games, but never a hat trick in the Elite League. Couple in the second league, but not quite cracked at the, the ODI yet. Yeah, the yeah, young man. Yeah. Okay. Of you. Stephen, so I'm going to ask you can you, have you scored a goal at Elite level, or Elite League level? No, I've, I've not even come close, mate. I haven't even had a shot on net. I've had a few assists. assists. <laughs> a few assists. Uh, what, one year, uh, one year, I think it was Dundee. Um, I had like fourteen assists or something like that. I beat a couple of guys. I beat a couple of them. Who <laughs> 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 scored a couple of guys? Yeah. 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 Scott Young, and he went coast to coast. Eh? That's, I think it was. Uh, he was just. I think it was just a uh, stop it behind the net. One of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that that's all the questions done, guys. That us? Yes. Got through okay. all. Twenty past nine. Can we tell them about Sunday? Have we, have you served, are we? No, Sunday's going ahead, twelve o'clock. Um, but there'll be a further announcement about Sunday. But right, right now, um, Sunday's fitness session is on, guys. Um, just watch out. That might that might change and might include the younger kids at under 11s, under 13s, but right now it's still for 15s and 18s. But just watch out, guys, for the announcement. Hopefully tomorrow, early tomorrow. Okay, cool. So we've got that going on on Sunday, kids, and then next Friday we'll have Friday Night Live again with a couple of different guests. So stay tuned, stay tuned to find out who they're going to be, and then next Saturday for all you goalies that are on the call. Colin Grubb is going to do the second part of his three-part webinar as well. So we're going to keep doing as much as we can for you guys to, over the next few weeks and months just to keep you all engaged and interested in hockey and keep you thinking about hockey as much as we possibly can. Um, I think if we're going to wrap this up now, this is a good time for everybody to say thanks to Stephen, to Matt and to Jordan. Kids, can we get a big two thumbs up for them all to say thank you? Great, okay. And, yeah, and on behalf of Barry, Martin and I, guys, thanks for giving up your time. Thanks for helping us trying to achieve what we're trying to achieve here by trying to keep our sport alive during lockdown. Um, these these webinars that we're doing are going to go a long way to keep uh, keeping our kids engaged and hope, hopefully we don't lose too many of them. And when rinks do open again, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have good numbers throughout Scottish hockey. So, yeah. Guys, thanks very much for tuning in once again. It's great to see all the same faces that come week week after week, and it's great to see some new faces and some new names all the time as well. Go tell your friends how good a night you had watching Friday Night Live and encourage them all to come and watch, watch with you next Friday, okay? Okay, fellas, boys and girls, we'll see you all next week. We'll see you all Sunday, more importantly, for your fitness session, right? Harris McMillan, I know you'll be on, won't you? Yeah, Adam Paisley, will we see you? Oh, Adam's just gone, I think. Finley Sawyers, will we see you? Yep. Good stuff. Okay, guys, thanks for all tuning in. We'll see you again next week.